When we square something, we multiply it by itself. So in expanded form, 2x all squared would be 2x times 2x. If we were to write this in index form, 2 times 2 would be 2 squared, and x times x would be x squared. We can see that the power of 2 that was originally outside the bracket applies to both the 2 and the x that were inside the bracket. Similarly, if we cube 5x, that would be 5x times 5x times 5x, which in index form would be 5 cubed x cubed. xy to the power 5 would look like this. And in index form would be x to the power 5, y to the power 5. In general, if we have more values inside a bracket, the power outside applies to everything in the bracket. So AB all to the power n would be the same as A to the n times B to the n. And this is our fourth index law. We can use this index law to simplify the following problems. 2x all to the power 4 would be the same as 2 to the power 4 x to the power 4. In simplest terms, 16x to the power 4. The power of 3 outside the bracket applies to both the x and the y, so this would be x cubed, y cubed. In this example, the 2 inside the bracket is raised to the power of 3 already, and we're going to raise that to the power of 2 again. So it would look like this. And the a is also raised to the power 2. We simplify this using the index law that says when we have a value raised to a power and raised to a power again, we multiply the powers. So this would simplify to 2 to the 3 times 2, or 2 to the power 6. And 2 to the power 6 is 64. For this last expression, the power of 3 outside the bracket means that we have 3 to the power 3, x to the power 3, and y to the power 4 raised to the power 3 again. 3 cubed is 27, x cubed, and y to the 4 times 3 is y to the 12. So in simplest form, this is 27, x cubed, y to the power 12. If there's a fraction inside the bracket, does the power outside the bracket apply to both the numerator and denominator in the fraction? If we write 2 thirds cubed in expanded form, it would be 2 thirds times 2 thirds times 2 thirds. 2 times 2 times 2 in the numerator would be 2 cubed, and 3 times 3 times 3 in the denominator would be 3 cubed. So we can see, in fact, that a power outside a bracket containing a fraction applies to both the numerator and denominator in the fraction. If we look at this next example, x over 2 all raised to the power 4, in expanded form, it would look like this. In the numerator we have x times by itself 4 times, or x to the power 4, and in the denominator we have 2 to the power 4. So the power of 4 applies to both the numerator and denominator x divided by y cubed in expanded form would look like this. In the numerator we have x times by itself 3 times, or x cubed, and in the denominator y times by itself 3 times, or y cubed. So in general, if there is a power outside a bracket containing a fraction, the power applies to both parts of the fraction, that is, the numerator and the denominator. And this is our fifth index law. We can use this law to simplify the following 
very quickly. 4 divided by x all squared would be the same as 4 squared over x squared, which simplifies to 16 over x squared. If we have t divided by s to the power 5, this is the same as t to the power 5 over s to the power 5. In this example, we have 2x divided by y all to the power 4, which would be the same as 2x to the power 4 divided by y to the power 4. We would then use the index law that says a power outside a bracket applies to all the values in the bracket. So the numerator would be 2 to the power 4 x to the power 4 over y to the power 4. 2 to the power 4 is 16, x to the power 4, y to the power 4 would be the simplest form. In this last example, we have xy cubed divided by 3z squared, all squared. So the power of 2 applies to the xy cubed in the numerator and the 3z squared in the denominator, which would be x squared, y to the 3 times 2, or y to the 6, over 3 squared, and z to the 2 times 2, or z to the power 4. We can simplify this further, and we'd get x squared y to the power 6 over 9z to the power 4.